Hey guys, I'm Nisha Homi. Today I'm sharing four healthy and nutrient rich lunchbox recipes ideal to include in your weight loss journey. So let's get started with the recipes. I'm heating my kadai with two teaspoons wood pressed groundnut oil. Instead of wood pressed groundnut oil, you can use any locally sourced wood pressed oils of your choice. Once the oil is heated, I'm adding in half teaspoon mustard seeds. Once the mustard seeds starts to splutter, reduce the flame to the lowest and add in one small onion finely chopped. One green chilli finely chopped. A sprig of fresh curry leaves. I am tearing the curry leaves and adding in so that the flavors are released. And give it a good stir. Allow the onions to saute until it starts to turn transparent or light pink in color. Once the onions are transparent or light pink in color, I am adding in 2 carrots grated. Pink Himalayan salt as needed. Half teaspoon freshly ground black pepper powder. Give this all a good mix. Add in a splash of water. Cover and allow the carrots to get cooked. 2-3 to three minutes later, open the lid. Give it a good stir. Lightly saute the carrots for a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes later, add in half teaspoon garam masala. Give it a good stir. Into this, I am adding in one cup of cooked Tuyamalli rice. Tuyamalli is an indigenous variety of rice which has the most B vitamins. However, you can use any variety of cooked rice you have at hand. I cooked the rice without adding extra salt. So into this I am adding in 1 cup of cooked Tuyamalli rice. Give it a good stir. And once nicely mixed, turn off the flame. Squeeze in 1 lemon. Give it a good stir. And my super healthy carrot rice is ready to serve. I am making a quick beetroot raita. I am using my dairy free vegan curd. This is cashew curd. However, if you don't have any issues with the dairy milk curd, you can use dairy curd. I have already shared four different ways to make dairy free vegan curd. You can check them out if you would like to know how to make dairy free curd. So into a bowl, I have added in a couple of tablespoon of dairy free cashew curd. Into this I am adding in pink Himalayan salt as needed, some grated beetroot, finely chopped green chilies. Green chilies you can increase or decrease as per your taste. Some fresh coriander leaves and I am giving this all a good mix. I am using raw grated beetroot. However, if you prefer you can use boiled and grated beetroot as well. And my quick and easy beetroot raita is ready to serve. Add the beetroot raita into the tiffin box. Chopped green chilies to garnish. Add the carrot rice. And my lunch box with carrot rice is ready. I'm heating my kadai with 1 to 2 teaspoons of wood pressed groundnut oil. Instead of wood pressed groundnut oil, you can use any locally sourced wood pressed oil of your choice. Once the oil is heated, I'm adding in half teaspoon mustard seeds. Once the mustard seeds starts to crackle, I'm adding in 6 garlic cloves sliced. Give it a stir and allow the garlic cloves to get light golden brown in color. Once the garlic cloves starts to turn light golden brown in color, I'm adding in a small onion finely chopped. One green chilli finely chopped. Green chilli you can increase or decrease as per your taste. Allow the onions to saute until it starts to turn transparent or light pink in color. Once the onion starts to turn transparent or light pink in color, I'm adding in 200 grams of mushrooms chopped. Mushrooms are low in calorie. It's a good source of protein and fiber. Giving this a good mix. Pink Himalayan salt as needed. Cover and allow the mushrooms to get cooked. Remember, I have kept the flame on the lowest. 
mushrooms when they start to get cooked will release moisture so you don't need to add in any extra water a couple of minutes later open the lid and you can see that moisture has started to release out covering it again and allowing the mushrooms to get cooked thoroughly another couple of minutes later the moisture has absorbed really well so into this i'm going to add in some masalas one third teaspoon turmeric powder half teaspoon coriander powder half teaspoon kashmiri chili powder half teaspoon garam masala half teaspoon jeera powder also known as roasted cumin powder half teaspoon freshly ground black pepper powder and i'm giving this all a good mix and allowing the mushrooms to roast along with the spices so that the raw flavor of the spices will be diminished once the raw flavor of the masalas has diminished i'm adding in one fourth of a capsicum finely chopped and give it a good mix next i'm adding in one cup of cooked rice today i'm using tuya malli rice so into this i'm adding in one cup of cooked tuya malli rice some coriander leaves and give this all a good mix because i added the capsicum towards the end it will retain a subtle crunch however if you don't prefer that you can add in the capsicums along with the mushrooms and thoroughly cook it at this stage you can check salt if you feel you need more salt you can add in once nicely mixed turn off the flame and i'm squeezing in one lemon and give it a good mix and my super healthy mushroom rice is ready to serve i'm making a quick vegan raita to go along with the mushroom rice today i'm using cashew curd however if you don't have any issues with dairy milk curd you can use dairy milk curd i'm adding in pink himalayan salt as needed some red chili flakes and i'm giving it a good mix next i'm adding in one cucumber finely chopped and i'm giving it all a good mix you can also grate the cucumber and add in but uh, i prefer the subtle crunch the chopped cucumber gives and my quick and easy vegan cucumber raita is ready to serve add in the mushroom rice as needed and my super healthy mushroom rice is ready to serve Into my pressure cooker, I'm adding in half cup soaked tur dal, which I have rinsed thoroughly. One tomato chopped, half cup water, one third teaspoon turmeric powder, and I'm going to pressure cook for two to three whistles or until the dal is nicely cooked. While the dal is getting cooked, I'm making a green rice with green amaranth leaves. So this is locally sourced green amaranth leaves. I have taken a handful of the tender leaves, washed and rinsed it thoroughly, and I've kept it on a strainer. Instead of green amaranth leaves, you can also use palak leaves. Into my small chutney grinder, I'm adding in a couple of tablespoons water. Into it, I'm adding in two to three cloves of garlic, which I have slit. One third teaspoon whole black pepper corns, half teaspoon sea salt. Add in the green amaranth leaves, and I'm going to blend it. really well okay now the leaves are nicely blended so i'm going to keep this aside i'm heating a small kadai with 2 teaspoons wood pressed sesame oil sesame oil is also known as nallenna in malayalam or gingerly oil or thill oil instead of wood pressed sesame oil you can use any locally sourced wood pressed oil of your choice or even a to desi ghee once the oil is heated i'm adding in half teaspoon mustard seeds Once the mustard seed starts to splutter, add in half teaspoon jeera, also known as cumin seeds. And once the jeera splutter, reduce the flame to the lowest. Add in one teaspoon orad dal, one teaspoon Bengal gram, also known as kadala peripen in Malayalam. Give this a stir and allow the dals to get lightly roasted. Remember, the flame is on the lowest. Once the dal starts to get lightly roasted. add in a handful of chopped shallots and one green chili slit some fresh curry leaves and just tearing the leaves and adding in so that the flavors are released give it a good stir 
And once the shallots are transparent or light pink in color, I'm adding in the blended green amaranth leaves. Give it a stir, cover, and allow the blended leaves to get cooked. A couple of minutes later, open the lid, give it a good stir. The blended leaves are nicely cooked at this point. I have already added sea salt while blending the leaves, so add salt accordingly. And to this I'm adding in a fat pinch of acephatida powder. This is my homemade acephatida powder. I have already shared how to make it at home. Acephatida is also known as hing or kayam in Malayalam. Give this a good stir. And to this I'm adding in one cup of cooked toyamalli rice. Give this a good stir. At this point you can check salt. If you feel you need more salt, you can add in. Once nicely mixed, turn off the flame and I'm adding in about a teaspoon of lemon juice. Give this a good mix. And my quick and easy green rice is ready. Let's check on the dal. Okay, now the dal is nicely cooked. I'm lightly mashing the dal. I'm adding in some extra water to thin out the dal. Add water as per your preferred consistency of the dal. Turn on the flame and bring this to a boil. Add in pink Himalayan salt as needed. Give it a stir. And allow it to come to a boil. Once the dal starts to boil, reduce the flame to the lowest. For the tatka, I'm heating my tatka pan with the wood pressed groundnut oil. Instead of wood pressed groundnut oil, you can also use A2 Desi ghee. Once the oil is heated, add in 1 teaspoon jeera. Two whole red chilies which I'm breaking into half and adding in some sliced shallots, two to three cloves of garlic. Turn off the flame, add in a little bit of turmeric powder and red chilli powder, acephatida powder. Pour the tatka over the dal. Sprinkle in finely chopped coriander leaves. Give it a quick stir. And my simple dal curry is ready to serve. Add the rice into the lunch box. Add in the dal curry. And my super healthy, filling and nutrient rich rice and dal curry is ready to serve. To make the next recipe into my kadai, I'm adding in 2 to 3 teaspoons of wood pressed sesame oil. Once the oil is heated, I'm adding in 1 teaspoon mustard seeds. Once the mustard seed starts to splutter, reduce the flame to the lowest and add in half teaspoon jeera, 1 teaspoon urad dal, 1 teaspoon bengal gram, also known as kadala peripa. Give it a stir and lightly roast the dals. The roasted dals will give an amazing crunch to the rice, hence uh, I prefer to use them. However, you can skip it if you don't prefer. You can also add in a handful of uh, raw peanuts in this recipe if you prefer. Once the dals are roasted, I'm adding in one whole red chilli, a sprig of fresh curry leaves. Just give it a stir. Add in one onion finely chopped. Lightly saute the onions until they are transparent or light pink in color. Okay, now the onions are now transparent. At this stage, I'm adding in one tomato finely chopped. I'm adding in a splash of water. Give it a stir. Cover. And allow the tomatoes to get cooked on low flame. A couple of minutes later, open the lid. Give it a stir. Into this, I'm adding in 250 grams of sliced bindi, also known as lady's finger. Give it a stir. Cover with the lid for about two minutes. Two minutes later, open the lid. Give it a good stir. Allow the bindi to get roasted. Okay, now the bindi has started to roast well. Now, at this stage, I'm gonna add in some spices. Half teaspoon Kashmiri chili powder. 1 third teaspoon garam masala, half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, pink Himalayan salt as needed and give this all a good mix. 
allow the bindi to roast for about two to three minutes so that the raw flavor of the spices are diminished a couple of minutes later the bindi is nicely roasted at this stage you can check salt if you feel you need more salt you can add in into this i'm adding in one cup of cooked toya malli rice you can use any cooked rice variety of your choice give it a good stir Once nicely mixed and the rice is heated up, you can turn off the flame. And I'm squeezing in half a lemon. I'm sprinkling in some chopped coriander leaves. Give it a good stir. And lastly, I'm adding in 1 4 teaspoon of roasted acephated powder. Give it a good mix. I'm also serving dal along with the rice. And my super healthy and filling lunchbox meal is ready so guys do try these healthy rice recipes and uh, let me know how it turned out thank you for watching and until next time take care bye bye